Welcome to an introduction to the SWIFT feature, Strong and Engaged Site Leadership. Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm Allison. Let's get started. As you'll recall, this domain is one of five evidence-based concepts that, when implemented together, transform teaching and learning for the success of all students. The administrative leadership domain has two features, strong and engaged site lead leadership and strong educator support system. Today we are exploring strong and engaged site leadership. Strong and engaged site leadership is about three big ideas. First, strong and engaged site leadership is about a clear and visible commitment to continuously improving teaching and learning. Strong and engaged site leaders, including administrators and teacher leaders, are focused on how their efforts are tied to student outcomes. Second, strong and engaged site leadership is not about one person. Strong and engaged leaders actively foster and leverage leadership at all levels. For example, building administrators distribute leadership roles to teacher leaders. Third, sites actively welcome input from all stakeholders by creating opportunities for staff and families to contribute to core school decisions. Next, let's take a look at what research says about the value of strong and engaged site leadership. Research is clear that strong and engaged site leadership is a key component for developing and sustaining inclusive school practices. We know that leadership has a significant effect on the quality of school organizations and pupil learning. But remember, leadership is not just about one principle. Distributed leadership among teacher leaders we know is a contributing factor to school success. So how are we going to create or strengthen our site leadership? Let's unpack these five practices that are recommended for us to get started. The five practices that are related to strong and engaged site leadership are as described now. The site leader leads development of a vision. The principal regularly attends instructional meetings and conducts classroom visits. Create a leadership team that facilitates decisions related to school-wide systems and practices. Create opportunities for all stakeholders to contribute to school decisions. And regularly use academic and behavior data to guide school decisions. Let's look at the steps for how site leaders can develop lead development of a clear vision. It's important for building leaders to include all stakeholders in the process of developing a clear vision. Consider ways to incorporate family, community, and student input. Perhaps have stakeholders perhaps have stakeholders vote on what goals they value. Work to ensure that all stakeholders, particularly traditionally marginalized stakeholders, are included in the educational process. And ask, what might keep some stakeholders from participating? Let's discuss, what ideas do you have for collecting input from your stakeholders? When developing or revising the vision, make sure it reflects your school's values and beliefs. This may require revisiting it through the eyes of students, families, and community members. Ask, if they had never seen your vision statement, would they generate a consistent list of values based on how school and district staff act, talk, and educate their children? This practice may also involve re-examining the current school di or district vision in relation to goals for instructional outcomes and talking about how to make the vision a living mission that is visible in school and district decisions and actions. It is important to regularly reference the vision and use it to guide school-wide decisions. Make sure the developed vision is more than just a piece of paper that gets put in a binder. Practice number two. For strong and engaged site leadership, the principal should make it a priority to regularly attend instructional meetings and conduct classroom visits. When conducting classroom visits, the principal should make expectations for teachers and staff clear. Teachers should know what leaders are looking for when they enter the classroom. The principal should use classroom visits as an opportunity to provide positive feedback to teachers. Make sure classroom visits are comfortable and frequent. The visits should not be tied to an evaluation system. Principal walkthroughs are an important way to get to know staff and students and provide opportunities for specific, positive feedback in a formative way. When principal classroom visits become routine, they provide an excellent opportunity to see instructional priorities in practice. Let's discuss for a moment, how can classroom visits be a part of the school's collective growth around instructional priorities and be conducted in a manner that is supportive and positive. Talk about how to capitalize on classroom visits as a way to provide early recognition of applying new learning into practice. Strong and engaged site leaders should also make participation in instructional meetings a priority. 
Your presence at instructional meetings provides an opportunity for a principal to lend support and, importantly, to keep a wide-angle lens on the strengths and needs across grade levels. Strong and engaged site leadership also includes creating a leadership team that facilitates decisions related to school-wide systems and practices. Make sure the leadership team meets regularly and is representative of all stakeholders. When re-examining a leadership team from the lens of strong representation, think about representation in terms of grade levels, specialized personnel, families, community members, and students. Does a well-represented group gather around the table? Are families represented? Are meetings frequent enough to move planning and implementation forward? Are meetings consistent? Another strategy that is important, but often overlooked, is taking time to put on paper the role of the leadership team. Develop a written document that outlines the purpose and functions of the leadership team. Having written documentation of the purpose and function helps keep the team focused and keeps consistency as membership on the team changes over time. The leadership team should also use school-wide data to guide decisions. The leadership team should review data to determine strengths and opportunities for improvement. Data should then guide the priorities for action. Let's discuss how does or could your school leadership team use school-wide data to guide your decisions? Practice number four, create opportunities for all stakeholders to contribute to school decisions. In order to create opportunities for stakeholders to contribute, it's important for administrators to distribute leadership to school teams. Create teams that can meet identified needs in the school, such as a team who organizes data or a team who researches strategies to meet an identified need. Also, consider whether additional teams include or interface with stakeholders, such as students, families, and community members. As we examine opportunities for people to contribute to school decisions, the issue of reach from a leadership team or teams in general becomes important. For example, one school had a PBIS team that solicited input from their student council, PTA, and community outreach committee. Because these were standing committees, scheduling time for gathering input was as simple as asking to be on their agenda. Make sure all school teams are empowered to make decisions related to their team's primary purpose and function. Leadership and the power to make decisions should not be held in the hands of one administrator. Practice five, regularly use academic and behavior data to guide decisions. Database decision-making is a central tenant within the SWIFT framework. Specific to strong and engaged site leadership, Think about the degree to which data is used efficiently and effectively to guide school-wide decisions. Develop a system for collecting and reporting academic and behavior data so teams can be efficient and effective with their team. Focus on creating efficiencies by ensuring easy access to organized data reports. Ensure leaders facilitate productive meetings in which data are organized and discussion processes are meaningful. Let's discuss. What systems could you put in place to ensure efficiency related to collecting and using academic and behavior data at your school? So we just covered the five practices related to strong and engaged site leadership. Let's debrief as we think about our own school and our own district. Why is creating strong and engaged site leadership important? Discuss with your peers what strengths already exist. Discuss with your peers opportunities for growth. Set goals and next steps.